How many of you guys have been up to Rapid City and that in the beautiful Black Hills? Isn't it a nice area? And how many of you guys would like to go but just haven't had the money? So <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful drive, and it only takes about six hours from, from Denver here to get up there, and you can see Mount Rushmore and all of the other wonderful things. And there is another creation science group up there called the Black Hills Creation Science Association. And so I'll send greetings to you from a sister organization who loves the Lord and loves the truth and does whatever they can to promote it in the northeast Wyoming, western South Dakota, southeast Montana region as well. Well, tonight we're going to talk, and, and you'll notice I talk sometimes fairly quickly, on the human reproductive system. And I want to give a couple disclaimers right up front. I know some of you have uh, small children here. No need to worry about that, even though we're going to talk about the human reproductive system, because there's no, there's no pictures, there's no gross anatomy, there's nothing like that on, on this. This is a, this is a G-rated uh, G talk. So if you came for the pictures, sorry, you can might as well go now. Uh, it depends on who, how, we, how we came here. But uh, you don't have to worry about that. However, if you're going to talk about the reproductive system, and being a physician, I have to use some medical terms. So let me know if any of these words are going to bother you tonight. We're going to have to use the word egg. No problem with egg. Okay, all right. Egg's, egg's good to go. How about sperm? Anybody going to trouble your ears with sperm? Any of those other kinds of things like that? And then we're going to have to talk about sperm meeting egg. Okay? Everybody clear? Good, good. Now, as long as we get past those words and we can get past those terms... Tonight's lecture is taken right from medical school. So you're going to have to place yourself in second year medical school. It's all on human physiology and how the reproductive system works. It may be, it may be the most scientific talk that you've had in your group. And it's going to have a lot of medical jargon and there's going to be some medical and some scientific terminology in it. But I'm going to explain all of it. All of it will be explained, so don't worry about that. When, you, when I have slides up here and I put the slides on, because every now and then in the audience, I get someone who is a, not quite a believer and they want to see the evidence. They want to see it. They don't want to hear it directly from me, so I put the quotations right from medical texts right on the screen. We're not going to read all of those, but I'll explain to you everything that's in those texts. The whole idea, though, is to build a very compelling case for creation. And I was just in a debate two weeks ago at, the, at Weber State University in Ogden, Utah, and I had two opponents, both of them were evolutionists. And, of course, I spent a lot of time attacking evolution and tearing it down. And one of the questions always comes up in the question and answer section, yes, you did a, you did a good job of tearing down evolution, but do you have any positive evidence for creation? Do you have any evidence of design? Can you show us any of that evidence of design? So the whole idea tonight is to build an a airtight case airtight case for design, a positive case for creation. And I recognize that many of the things I'll say, you, you may not remember everything when you leave here, but I want in your mind and in your heart for you to say, I heard and I saw something that was absolutely positively pointing the finger to the hand of God. And something that you'll say, the quality and the quantity of scientific evidence in this compared to what I see on National Geographic, Discovery Channel, the Unlearning Channel, and all of those other ones there is, is much, much more than that. So I'm kind of warning you up front. There's going to be a, a lot of scientific case here, but I'm convinced that the best evidence for the designer is in the details. It's in the details, and you have to see it. If you want to know how an engine works, you can't just look at it. You've got to start what? pulling the heads off, pulling things off, looking inside it. And when you start to look inside, that's when you get to see how complex it is and you have to look at the details. So we're going to pull the heads off and we're going to look inside the human reproductive system. So the, that's what we're going to talk about, the complex design of the human reproductive system.
So, if for nothing else, people usually will come and listen to a talk on the human reproductive system. But second, and this is going to come out through both the reproductive system to function as real science, real science de uh, delineates it. It wouldn't take, just as the evolutionists say, a series of fortuitous gen genetic mistakes called mutations. It would take those in the mother, those in the father, and as you'll see in the second half of tonight's talk, it would have to be happening in the baby at the same time. All of them, all of them happening at the same time. And as this slide says here, they'd have to be integrated, progressively complex. They'd all have to be happening at the same time. All of those in order for the reproductive system to work. And third, evolution, and I believe this is the nail in the coffin, is dependent upon a continuing lineage. You have to have one generation, another generation, and another generation in order for natural selection and mutations to work on it. And I, I suppose that most of you are familiar with the evolutionary, standard evolutionary story. And of course they can make up stories about how maybe an eye or a visual system evolved getting progressively and progressively and progressively more complex as time goes on because you have next generation to get it better and the next generation to get it better. However, with the reproductive system, you only have one bite at the apple, one bite. If you don't get it right the first time, there is no offspring. And if there is no offspring, there's no second chance to get it right. And that brings a terrible screeching halt to what? Evolution. And that's why this is so important, because you have to get it right from the beginning. Otherwise, you don't get a second chance. And so this is by far the most important reason, if you're going to look at the design of something. Evolutionists can make up a lot of stories of how something maybe might possibly evolve, but with the reproductive system, you have to get it right, right from the get-go. So here's an example of what we're going to look at tonight. This is taken from William's obstetrics textbook. Probably you don't have this on your shelf at home, but uh, most of them, most physicians have this. It's a classic textbook right here. And this is a quote. Now listen.